Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. Folks, uh, can we have quiet, please? The Committee on Health and Human Services, chaired by uh, Councilman Bass, held a hearing uh, based on a resolution that uh, was uh, passed in this body. Uh, it particularly had to do with DHS and whether the city agency, despite the good work that it does, its good mission, whether or not it was complying with state law. The issue is whether or not DHS as an organization routinely routinely and intentionally violate state law, the Child Protective Services law. And from what I've seen, it does, it has, and it justifies it. DHS is also the entity that educates mandated reporters in this city, and it routinely violates the law. So under those circumstances, um, I think it is important to focus specifically on DHS. Uh, the mothers that are here today and the many, many mothers who have contacted my office and brought proof to my office have been going to their elected officials for years. This is not the first time that they've come to City Hall. I'm not the first elected official that they've been to. But they have come continuously and they have no confidence in this current system because despite all the evidence that they have presented, that I've seen, medical records, photographs, videotape, uh, testimony, all of those things, they have not been able to get a response, an appropriate response to their complaints. There is something wrong with DHS. The biggest problem that I have with DHS is that DHS tells us there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. And in the course of pursuing this, uh, there have been threats made, threats intimated that there will be retaliation that there will be political consequences, all types of threats. And I wonder why. Why is that when all that we're doing is our duty to provide an oversight to an administ administrative agency that is responsible for protecting children? Why the threats? Why the problems? What I want to look at in this committee and not whitewash it, sugarcoat it, hide it, or persecute it, I want to look and see whether or not the agency is in compliance with the law. I will say that I have, in looking at the evidence, and I have about 50 mothers, mothers who have voluntarily been videotaped. They said, videotape me, we videotape them, we have that. They're not being videotaped and presenting evidence because they're hiding something. They are mostly not at fault mothers, which means they, they were never accused of doing anything wrong. They were never accused of being abusive or negligent. They, in most cases that they have come forward, it was determined by DHS that the allegations were unfounded, yet, they have been denied their children for years. Their, their children are being placed in multiple foster care situations where they are abused, they have run away, they are depressed, they're medicated, they're sexually violated. And it continues. And then when not at fault mothers, and no one has said they've done anything harmful to their children, comply with DHS get a GED, get a job, do everything they want. Two years later, DHS tells them, but we are putting your child up for permanent legal custody. It happens too much. There's something definitely wrong. And finally, some of the facts that I've seen and confirmed are horrendous. What I mean is I have accumulated evidence in a particular case that I've sent to the Attorney General's office, the U.S. Attorney's office. I have tried to give it to our district attorney. And it is because DHS 
has placed a five-year-old child who has been raped by a boyfriend, tried to place that child with the boyfriend, claiming to the judge that this was the paternal father when that was not the paternal father. DHS then places the child with the girlfriend of that person. That five-year-old child provided a medical uh, report corroborated by her 10-year-old brother of two years of rape. And DHS determined that the case was unfounded. There's no police investigation. That person, the rapist, is on the street. But DHS came to the grandmother's home and took the third grandchild without a court order. And that's on videotape. No court order. They handed a piece of paper, and when it was opened after taking the child in front of a police lieutenant and six police officers, that piece of paper was not a court order. Now, the judge, receiving a, a document from DHS, signed an order that the grandmother is to have no interaction with her three grandchildren. And now, they have brought allegations against the grandmother as being mentally ill. This is not something that um, I think is just a general handling of this matter. Uh, I think these type of cases, and I'm clearly not saying this is routine, obviously not. What I am saying is these type of situations appear to occur in a system that is not complying with the law. It does a lot of good things, but we cannot ignore the complaints of constituents all over our city who have brought evidence and continue to bring evidence to their elected representatives seeking help. I would ask all of the council members to believe the women who are here today. The evidence will come out without a appropriate and proper committee to look specifically at this problem, despite whatever threats are being made, we will not get to the bottom of this. DHS cannot investigate itself. Thank you.